Hey guys, in this problem we have this diagram of the anatomy of a crane, and we're told that it must be balanced. So the right arm of the crane needs to pick up this load, but in order to keep the crane from tipping, it needs to be balanced on the left-hand side with this weight right here. So the problem is asking us where the counterweight must be placed when the load is lifted. And keep in mind, our goal here is to make sure that the net torque on the tower on the, the crane's tower is equal to zero. That's the key. So just to label a few things here, let's say that oh actually I don't need to. I was gonna I was gonna say let's label this as one uh the, the weight as a lowercase m and the counterweight as a capital M. We already have those labels for us. Alright, so let's get to measuring the torque. So let's pick our positive direction to be counterclockwise, which means that our positive torque is going to be from the counterweight pushing downwards from gravity on the left-hand side of the crane, uh, contributing to a counterclockwise movement. So remember that the formula for torque is that the magnitude of torque is equal to the force, in this case due to a weight, multiplied by the lever arm, or where that, or the distance between where that force is acting and the, the pivot point of the force. So this distance right here, which I'm going to label X. So the component of the torque from the counterweight is going to be the weight of the, to of the, the torque from the counterweight. So big M multiplied by G, and then multiplied by the lever arm, which is X. And this is the variable that we want to find. Keep that in mind. But the other component of torque comes from the actual weight pulling down on the right-hand side of the crane, which is going to contribute to a clockwise motion, because it's going to cause the torque to kind of go in this direction. So let's make that a minus sign. So minus, then the torque from the weight, which is going to be the weight of this machine, the, the, the weight of the lift, multiplied by that side's lever arm, which is given to us as 7.7 .7 meters. I'm just going to call that D. So D is this distance right here. All right, so that is small m g d. And again, this has to equal zero. So to solve this problem, all we got to do is solve this equation for x. We can do that pretty simply. Since it's equal to zero, we can get rid of this negative sign by adding m g d to both sides of the equation. So we have big M G X equals small m g d. These g's cancel out because it's on both sides of the equation. And then we can solve for x by dividing both sides of the equation by big M. So we find that x, the distance we want, is equal to m d divided by big M. So now all that's left is to plug our values into the equation. Just for part A, I should note. So uh, small m is given to us as 2,800 kilograms. Okay. Multiplied by that particular lever arm, which is 7.7 .7 meters. And then this is all divided by 9,500 kilograms. Probably scroll down a little bit. 9,500 kilograms. Put this into a calculator, and we find a value for x of about 2.3 meters. So that is our answer to part A of the problem. But now for part B. Now part B asks, the part B of the problem asks for the maximum load that can be lifted if the counterweight is all the way at the leftmost edge of the counterweight balance. So you, you kind of can't see the diagram very well now because of my scribblings, but this says 3.4 meters. So what this is asking is how much mass can we lift if the counterweight is 3.4 meters away from the pivot point? So again, the same principle is going to apply, that the net torque has to be zero in order for it to be perfectly balanced. And we don't even need to think too hard about rederiving the equation, because we basically just have the same equation that we used in part A, only our variables might be slightly different now. So the, the mass, the big mass of the counterweight is not going to change, G is not going to change. Uh, again, we're looking at X the lever arm, except now this is something that's being maximized because it's as far as it can possibly go, the fullest extent, then minus the, the mass of the load. And this is another thing we're maximizing, because the problem's asking us to find how much mass can we possibly carry. Uh, G's not going to change, D's not going to change. And yeah, 
So we now just want to solve this equation for m sub max. So we'll use our same algebra as before. These g's can cancel out. Um, we can add m max d to both sides of the equation to make our math a little easier. So m x sub max is equal to small m sub max multiplied by d. And then we divide both sides of the equation by d to get m sub max on its own. So this is going to be equal to big M multiplied by x max divided by d. Okay, now all we got to do is plug our values into the calculator. So again, m sub max. So the big M that didn't change, it's just 9,500 kilograms. The x sub max at the fullest extent, which we discussed earlier, we can see from the diagram, it is 3.4 meters. And all this is being divided by 7.7 .7 meters once again. Put this into a calculator, and we find a mass of 4,200 uh, 4, kilograms. And that is our answer for part B. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing or sharing this with your friends, as that'll help me make more videos like this in the future. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. But that's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye bye